Well, hey friend, Al Picard here. And if you've ever painted tree filled skies, you know the challenge that emerges very quickly when you try to paint these landscapes. What is it? Sky holes. That's what this video is going to be all about. How do we create sky holes in our pastel landscapes that are convincing? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you strategies for sky holes and I made something special for you. Stick around. I'm going to tell you about it in the video. I'm excited about it. It's just for you. Besides that, you need to know, subscribe to this channel. Why? Because I want to bring you more great video lessons. And if you subscribe, you'll be all set. You'll be ready when the next video comes out. But that's about it. I can't wait to teach you these strategies for sky holes. So let's jump right in. Well, our subject today are trees by the river in Holland, and they provide us with exactly what we need, the challenge of little sky holes coming through from behind and giving that feeling of emanating light through the foliage. That's really what we're after here. And so just to catch you up, I've already toned my sanded board with a little bit of hard pastel, just some umber, some brown, just to create those shapes, those basic shapes. And I've also done a little thumbnail study, which you know I love to do. I go really deep into why I create thumbnails in my painterly landscape course. You can find out more about that on my website, but just know that that's my way of getting my vision for the painting established. And I've also got some pastels that I've pre-selected in a palette. We're really going to stay within basically uh, nature's uh, palette here with green trees and a blue sky. You know how sometimes I go crazy. Well, today we'll be a little bit more, you know, true to nature in order to focus on this theme of sky holes. So what I'm going to do now is jump in and begin to mass in with soft pastel, the sky value, as well as that tree, that darker tree foliage value. And I'll just pepper in these strategies as I go. We'll just lay them right in and I'll try to give you those insights and strategies for convincing sky holes as the piece develops. Okay, here we go. All right, so what I'll do first is just establish some ultramarine blue in the sky. As you can see, we've got a nice large mass of a cluster of trees. There's three or four trees right in this cluster and then some further away in the distance, some trees down by the riverbed that get a little larger over on this side and then opening up the sky through. So that's what we've got for our subject. Lots of fun. And I'm just going to begin to mask these open areas of sky in. Very important that we capture that great sense of the sky. Now, as we do this, the value of the sky really is something very important. So this is a mid-tone value, ultramarine blue. I'm going to open up the sky right in this area a little more than the reference material just because I thought it got a little bit, I don't know, claustrophobic. So I wanted a little more sky. And as we move down this sky, let's lighten that value. Let's go a little lighter. That's really not lighter. Let's go a little lighter into uh, this area. Now, one of the big keys in creating convincing, convincing sky holes in this is going to have to do with this theme of value. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the phrase simultaneous value, but basically it has to do with how a value looks like this particular light ultramarine when it's placed in front of different things. So if I put this light ultramarine in front of that light toned umber, it doesn't look very dark, but if, or rather it doesn't look very light, but if I put it in front of the black backdrop, it begins to look a lot lighter and brighter. So what is around the value is what influences how bright and how contrasty it looks. That's a big theme we're going to be talking about with sky holes. So we really want to establish this basic value of the sky. More to come on this topic of simultaneous value. Okay, so that's good. Let's get a little more into the little river, just a hint of the river down on the bottom of the scene. 
And we've got to get in and get darker value in that foliage right away. We want to see that darker value. So I'm going to jump into um, some richer, darker green. And we'll begin to establish that contrast. I made some initial little statements on where these tree trunks exist in the composition when I did the underpainting. So just even with this dark green, I can restate a little bit of that. Definitely not too much green. We want to keep it brown. Let's switch over to a, an umber. Since I seem to be working on these trunks, let's just deal with that. I'm just going to establish the location of these trunks so that as I scumble my foliage, I don't cover the trunks. There's actually some rooftops through here. Not a big important part of this painting, so I may ignore that for the sake of our lesson on sky holes. All right, a nice greenish ochre. So I'm really trying to create a mass of foliage early on. I want to create that sense of the, the whole cluster. And uh, then those sky holes will have something to punch through and peek through. And of course, this foliage changes in value depending on if the layers are hidden in shadow or if they are receiving the light of the sun. So again, as I get close to this tree trunk, I'm just going to be a little more careful. Go. We'll get some nice now I'm going to push this around a little bit before we move forward. Let me make sure I've got all my all my foliage shapes in little trees. Back to that dark green real quick. Now, as we put this dark value green in, just squint your eyes. I'm squinting my eyes right now. Make sure you can see where those darker values uh, push deeper into the mass of foliage. Mix that green in with the brown. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a brush or something and just push some of this around because it's important for us to establish some connection between the sky value, the blue and the foliage. So we're going to just create a little more haziness. Okay. So I've got a hake brush here and I'm just going to push some of this into each other and you'll see a nice soft transition between the sky and the foliage. Now, I'm giving away a strategy right here. Now, I know we're not punching sky holes through, but um, as the sky moves into the foliage, it gets a little bit duller under the foliage. And so that strong color of the sky dulls down behind the foliage and it gets a little less bright, okay, through here. And so that's one of your strategies is, is you want to make the value of the sky a little duller and a little less bright, a little less light because of that simultaneous contrast issue where that blue that looks kind of normal in the sky area, all of a sudden, if you put it in front of the dark, it is really bright. Okay. Now I'm going to be just teaching along here as I paint, but I want you to know 
that I made something special just for you because I know these issues of sky holes can be challenging. So I've created a guide. It's four ways to paint convincing sky holes and it's available to you right now. The link is in the description. You just jump down to the description, click that link and get the four ways to paint convincing sky holes all laid out for you with key themes so you can take your paintings of landscapes with trees to the next level. Sound good? Awesome. All right, so let's push this uh, in a little bit more. I really like to create a kind of hazy sense of the tree shape and foliage early on in the painting. And I know I'm losing pigment here as I do this, but that's okay. Love the way the, uh, the haze of the foliage creates a, a, a suggestive mood. And we're setting this area up for the future passage of letting the sky break through these larger masses of foliage. It's okay. Also, I'm, I'm, as you notice, whenever you blend, you dull the pigment. So I'm dulling the pigment, right? I mean, this is getting a little bit more neutral, a little less chromatic. That can be a good thing. We're going to put more chroma on top, uh, but to have areas that are neutralized a little bit in those transitions between foliage and sky. That's one theme I think that's really helps to create that convincing quality. We need grass down here, friends. We'll get it. We'll get it soon. Nice. Now I'm going to clean this brush a little. I'm just going to push this sky around, cover that board a little more clearly. I never really show you this in the video, but there's a large catch of cardboard below my easel. So when I do this and that pigment drops, it all falls into a little catch, safe and sound, and I vacuum it up later. All right. So let's just use this tree area for some of the sky hole exercise. Okay. Now we're going to go back up into this sky and we're going to push this value a little darker way up high in this top area. So we really get a full sense. And this is a more chromatic blue. It's a stronger color. And so we'll come into this tree. And as you can see, even just at the edge, I'm going to use irregular variety of patterns and shapes and movements, different sizes, different angles. I want to create that organic natural look to these transitions between the sky and the trees. And I can use this dark blue way up high to, to give the perception of the richer, deeper sky, of course, right? But as I lower into the landscape, I'm going to have to lighten that. Here's the thing though, in the tree, I can take this dark, middle dark cobalt blue, and I can bring a little bit of that into that transition zone lower in the painting. So it's a little darker and a little richer. So I can get away with that even down here. You might notice I put a sky hole here. This is darker than this, and that's actually very effective. So when we go into these, some of these darker areas, you'll see I'll drop in little sky holes and you'll, you know, you'll never get them perfect. Don't even try. You're going to put some in that you don't like and you can rub them out. We want to try to be selective. We want to try to be, like I said, um, irregular. We don't, we do not friends want to create these perfect little circles and like working to make our sky hole look like a circle. Here would be one that's bigger, you know, create some bigger ones, some smaller ones. And think about, as you develop your composition, how do those little holes through move the viewer's eye towards points of interest in your painting? Okay, I'm going to actually jump back in and put a little more dark value in the foliage, and then we will punch in some lighter sky. So I love that little hazy movement in here, but we need a little more contrast. Let's push this in. And even as I do this now, I'm using what I have, this hazy layer, 
and I'll change angles and I'll let this wonderful irregular sense of foliage build out. Come down into this smaller trees down by the river here. Push a little bit of that in. Let's throw some uh, green in for a riverbank. We'll just at least indicate it. That would be nice. Yeah, we've got grasses along this riverbank, so some vertical movement would help. But this mid-tone green represents another layer of the foliage that we can bring in, that sense in which the light is hitting. And we're going to build those transitions between the sky and the foliage and really build up some variety and texture, different values, a little bit of different color within that spectrum. Don't overdo it when it comes to sky holes, just as I'm working this area up, I would want to caution you that way. You don't want millions of little sky holes. That's going to start to look like a, uh, I don't know, just busy. You want to use them intentionally to develop the scene. I'm going to just change my green one more time into something a little warmer, a little more yellow in this. So we'll get that sense of the sunlight striking the foliage and giving us a nice color and I'm gonna go in there and just push some of that into the sky. It's, I do a lot of back and forth overlapping of the edge so we build some natural relationships there. Just for now we're gonna put a little more color down here. Okay, right in here, let's push darker in value around these trees. Go to that dark brown for the trunk. Oftentimes you'll have little sky holes that will appear in and around the tree trunk. So really clarifying that shape is going to be important for us. Okay, let's add some sky back in down bottom. And as we do, I'm going to move into a lighter value. And so we'll begin to explore this concept of simultaneous contrast as we bring more light value into the lower portion of this painting. I need a slightly darker version of the same color. Maybe a little darker still. Okay. So we're going to transition that sky from the darker value in the top down to a lighter transition. And as we do, we'll use that color to punch out the sky. There's a larger graphic shape that needs to emerge right in here. And when they're bigger, when these negative shapes essentially is what they are, these negative shapes that emerge between the foliage and the trees, when they're bigger, we can go full contrast. We can go full light value with them. But still, I might leave some of that darker cerulean at the edge so I can transition towards the darker value trees. So I've got a, a large negative shape. I've got some little tiny sky holes that are darker in there. I'm just starting to develop some of this play. Get that slightly darker and again, organic, irregular shapes. 
and sometimes just touching one edge so that one of those edges of that sky hole is softening. That gives a sense of the glow of the light, that emanation or glow of the light as it pushes through. If you soften that transition at times, it gives it a wonderful sense of that glow, okay? That's an excellent little strategy to use. So now as I come in here, I'm gonna use this darker teal. I might even use it a little along the edge of the foliage. And you can see how I'll go from the lighter area, I have to clean my fingers, the lighter area down low here, right, where we create this lovely kind of bright sense of the sky. And as we move in to the foliage, that transition to that mid-tone value is very effective. So I'm just going to push in with these negative shapes between the trees. And at times I'll take my finger and I'll dull and obscure that transition and I'll also soften it. Give it a little more of a sense of reality, maybe freshen up a little bit of it. Really want to establish this um, full light value so you get a sense of that transition. In between these trunks, we've got another punch through, which I've indicated right in here. And then I will go a little darker again as we move in here. We're getting into a thicker area. So let's grab just a bit down in here. I'm using sanded paper, so it takes a little bit to build up onto that 400 tooth sanded surface. As we move into this cluster of foliage, a little sky hole here, uh, use varying pressure with the stick as well. That's another way to create different sizes and different values of the mark. If you use a lighter touch, it will you know, it'll add less pigment onto the surface and so it'll be a little more breezy.
Well, I took some time to develop the shapes of the painting, work on that water in the river as well for some of those reflections. And now we get the fun of going back into this painting and working up some of the sky and creating those sky holes once again. And we'll talk some more about just how we can use uh, some chroma and some value and flickers of pastel to create those sky holes. Over here on this side, I need a little more of the lighter sky coming through. So let's jump in with that lighter value turquoise and begin to cut that out. It's such a lovely color. And you can see as soon as we use this value, it just brightens the whole scene up. It brightens the sky up. Wonderful sense of the freshness of the sky at the horizon. And you'll notice I'll change the direction of the pastel and the marks that I'm making to create those irregular suggestions of the sky peeking through the foliage. And now I'm coming into that area of the foliage. So I'm going to be very careful with this light value. I'll even switch over to something a little darker. And um, this is just a little bit darker. So we're going to step that value from the light to the middle light, to the middle, into the foliage. And even as I look at the hole, I will kind of grab this same color and put it in here and there where that I see it can be useful. I want to open this up just a little bit more. Okay, another strategy I've said before, I'll say it again. Really important to squint your eyes when you're creating the sky holes. That's going to show you both the size of the sky hole as well as the value. We want that different size sky hole. So squint your eyes and really see what that value is and how big it is. So we're going to get a little darker here. You can see as I squint right away that those values need to be much darker in this cluster. We can't get away with the lighter value because of simultaneous contrast. The light value surrounded by dark will appear brighter. I hope if nothing else in this video that that truth really sinks in. So helpful to understand. Just creating a little more transition in the sky of the turquoise. You can see I'm breaking up a larger mark and putting some texture and a little bit of sky hole work in there to create that peek through. Got a hard pastel here. Let's see if it works. Just because it's smaller, I can make these little, little light squares and we can put some peaks of sky into the water as well below. Add those sky reflections in the water. That's so important. Let's go a little darker into this greenish teal. I just want to break that square up. See, I was telling you about the sky holes. We don't want uniform shapes or kind of, we want them to look organic. So I had a really nice choppy mark in there, but it was kind of a perfect square. So I'm going to irregularize it. If that's even a word, I'm going to make it less uniform. I'm going to chop at it. So we get, now we get this nice sense of um, an irregular organic shape in there. And bring a little bit of this into the uh, water as well. This wonderful greenish hue. Just a bit, probably just a little too much. I can drag my finger over that and quiet it down. That's it. So now you're really starting to see this sparkle of sky going through this area of the painting. You know, often I like to use kind of one differentiating color. I really like this teal, but it's getting just, just a little bit too tinted toward white. 
Um, I'm going to try just a touch of, of a pink, just an indication. So I'll jump just down on that low section here. See if I can use a little pink. Now this is a light value you can see. So I'm going to be careful not to use this kind of color inside of the tree. It'll just be too bright. And just a little sense. I'm going to just scumble it very lightly. Like almost like this low clouds on the horizon in there. Maybe just a touch in the water as well. Diffuse it. I'll often say don't blend, but if you need to dull the color, if you need to diffuse it, then touching it with your finger is a perfect way to do that. Okay, one more, more chromatic accent of, of a tinted green. And as I squint, I'm going to add this in. Just clarify this negative shape a little more. So take your time and create those nice negative sky shapes that surround the trees. You can see this little bit of tinted green adds a little sparkle, adds a little sparkle and you can use that in the sky. We're always going to be careful when we come inside the dark value mass not to overwhelm. Maybe right in the middle of there, but if it's too much of an eyeball, then I'm going to knock that back. Oh. Just grabbing those reflective shapes in the water really quick. A little bit of turquoise over here on the right. Just cleaning this up. I, I dirtied that up before. Maybe a little sky hole poking through here, but I don't want to go crazy over here because it's not as important. So that's looking pretty good. Just a touch of violet to break up all that green. Okay, well, sky holes. I hope you've been edified, enlightened about this topic of sky holes. It's really something that you can grow in your strategies. Remember to vary the size, dull those sky holes. Really don't overwhelm them. Be selective, don't go crazy. Less really is more in some cases and ensure that they look natural and organic. Just a few of the strategies that we've talked about in this video lesson. But be sure to download that resource guide so you can have the four ways to make convincing sky holes in your landscape paintings. And of course, if you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel so that I can continue to bring more great videos your way. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. And let's keep the conversation going. How do you feel about sky holes? Is this a topic? that brings up some anxiety for you or if you've got some breakthrough with this particular technique and you can help us, let us know in the comments section. That'd be great. But now it's your turn. 
head out to the easel and paint a beautiful tree-filled sky. Just have fun and enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.